Hello. Hello everybody. So this week we decided to just do a quick recap on the last two videos. And what we've heard about the sailor since. Yeah. Day 16 of our Atlantic crossing. There's a French vessel with one man on board, stranded at sea for three days. So we've, we took a line from him and rigged up a tow line and now currently towing him into Grenada. <laughs> See the ocean, how it sways in the sun. Two months ago, just before Christmas, we've heard a few things since then, so just thought we'd update you. Yeah, we only got updated like two days after the video was released last week, mm. so we didn't even know none of this until this week, so it's all fresh information for us. Also, we have had, I can't believe how many views we, this video has had, it's yeah. like incredible. And the comments, yeah. like, thank you for all your comments, they've been so, well, majority have been so, so nice. <laughs> yeah. I never expected the video to have this many views, mm. but um, it's nice. The sailing community is a great community. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so thank you and welcome to the new people who subscribe to our channel. Um, welcome. I'm Alfie. I'm Jalen. Jalen. And we are currently living on our catamaran Coco, Fontaine Pajot Lucia Fulti which we brought two years ago now. Yeah. yeah, we've been cruising for two years on this boat. Um, we cruised a bit longer on the old boat, which was a 33-foot Colbert Countess. And we sailed around the Med in this boat and obviously just done the Atlantic crossing. We have no plans, I suppose, to stop sailing. We're in, at the, as it currently stands, our position is we're indefinitely sailing on this boat and living aboard. We go back to the UK every now and again to see family, but our plan is to indefinitely live aboard and sail and travel. Our plan this year is to go up to Virginia for hurricane season this year, and then back down to the Bahamas next year, and then up to Canada, and then back down to probably do Cuba, Mexico, the San Blas Islands. And we do want to, as much as people say that we can't do it and we shouldn't do it, we do want to sail the Northwest Passage in this boat so that, that's our plan that's our loose plan anyway isn't it mm -hmm. there were a lot of comments that there are a couple of negative comments right you get that anywhere but which we appreciate when there's logic involved um it was our first atlantic well, our first ocean crossing that big our first ever time towing so obviously our learning curve was very steep during the, the tow mm -hmm. we what i would have done things a, a lot different now Especially after listening and reading a lot of the comments that people were saying, throwing good suggestions out there, like the anchor chain thing, I would never have thought of. Those are bits and bobs. Do you know what I mean that? But it's easy to comment when you're not in that situation. Um, I find. I mean, <clears throat> I'm looking back at the video, and I'm like, man, we should have done that completely different. Oh, we could have just done this. But again, you have time to to second guess yourself when you're watching it. But when you're there. You have like split seconds to, to make them decisions, which in a nutshell, everyone was safe. Everybody's property was safe. We tried our best. Yeah, and... yeah, we tried our best. We done, and, and we succeeded. Like, and the guy's fine. The guy's mm -hmm. safe. We're safe. Our boat's safe. Despite people saying that our boat will never be insurable again, it's fine. It's no problem. I spoke to the insurance company. It's fine. I, 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 went, I was going to go off on a massive tangent then, but I, I pulled myself back. <laughs> um, so I think one of the main points that we'd like to cover is um, obviously the man was not dying but as we were having mixed signals from the Coast Guard we um, we just needed a straight answer and we were just putting a bit of pressure on the Coast Guard to just feel a bit more of a sense of urgency. Um, we did have it under control but we didn't know if the conditions were going to get even worse. Um, those conditions weren't predicted as they were yeah so yeah well, yeah exactly that and it was the it was the lack of the lack of truth i suppose from the coast guard had they said to us on our first phone call look guys we're not going to come out to get you until you're 12 miles from shore 
it's fine. We would have dealt with that. We would have known what we had to deal with. So you put your mind to it and you get the job done. We first we made the first phone call. They were like, okay, call back in 10 minutes. Oh yeah, we can come out to you, but call back in five minutes. Oh no, yeah, so the person we need to speak to is now not here. Call back in 20 minutes. And it was that that was, it, that was more draining than having to stay up. I don't know how many people have actually used the sat phone for communication. It's not like an ordinary phone call. There is a lag and it's quite hard to understand, especially for a broken line. And that delay, so like if you sort of, if you pause for a second, that second like feels like four or five seconds on the sat phone. So then the other person starts talking and it, it's, it's a bit of a, you get yourself in a bit of a muddle, put mm. that way. And it was that, that was, that was the reason why I said this guy's dying. And I mean, he wasn't dying, of course he wasn't dying. Anybody in the, who's seen the video can quite clearly see this guy. The guy wasn't dying, but it was. We just needed the, the, the coast guard to give an answer. And I suppose, in actual fact, like the the full length of that clip mm. probably did portray that. Mm. But because it's cut down, it's kind of viewed out of context. Mm. Like if you view the whole clip, it's probably like this guy is going to die if no one comes out and gets him. Because we were running out of tow ropes because our ropes were snapping. The guy, the French guy, whose name is. David, by the way, David, David. I think that might just be his alias. His internet alias, but he. Um, we've been told his name is David. He had no ropes. He had one fender. We were running out of ropes. So that was the reason why I said that. Yeah, and there was no way we would ever leave him anyway. Um, no. And we know it's our duty to help him because we were the closest boat. We're like there was just no question that we wouldn't have done that. Um, but it does. The whole situation does make you appreciate the Coast Guard and the RNLI in England, yeah, yeah, like yeah. their service is second to none and they're all volunteers so maybe that's why we expected a bit more because we know what service is usually like yeah, in yeah. those sort of situations but yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm definitely, definitely. And then another comment that we've had actually was why didn't we get the guy on board? Mm. There's a few reasons for this. Some were selfish for us admittedly but responsible because well, there's four of us on board um one we didn't know what the you hear horror stories and maybe i've seen too many films right but you this could be a ploy there could be someone else 10 miles around the corner with a boat full of people that are going to come and rob your boat i don't know maybe i've seen too many far-fetched films there's that we're in the we're in a pandemic still are um there was we were vaccinated and we'd got clearance from the Grenadian government that we didn't have to quarantine when we arrived because we were all vaccinated on board. Obviously, we'd been at sea for more than two weeks. Therefore, we didn't have to quarantine when we arrived in Grenada. Well, we didn't know the vaccination status from, of David. And, and, and that, yeah, and because we, we were literally, we were a day out. We didn't want to, we didn't want to get him on board and then that jeopardise us arriving in Grenada, which it would have done because mm -hmm. he had to quarantine for two weeks on a mooring board with no, with no, like no, um, what's the word? He had to quarantine for two weeks on a mooring board <laughs> <laughs> and he, he was stuck there and we would have been in that situation which would have messed everybody's Christmas plans up. Our flight, the Our Stu had flights home yeah. to see his family. We yeah. were going to see our family in America. Okay. So yeah, yeah, so that was, that was the, the selfish, side of the story but we did ask him if he wanted to come on board before that yeah. and obviously we would have like just had him on board if he needed to come on board at that moment yeah definitely yeah uh, yeah and that's that was another thing that was the first my first thought when we saw the boat was i mean the, the boat looked pretty rough to be honest with you um i thought he was just going to scuttle the boat mm. and um jump aboard which we would have been happy with because obviously for two weeks quarantine in in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't really matter. We would do it to save this guy's life or to, to keep him, to bring him, take him to shore. But he didn't want to at first. And we let him stay on his boat and we decided to tow his boat um, when we initially made, uh, intercepted him because the conditions were fine. The conditions were calm. We downloaded the weather from the Iridium Go for the rest of the evening and it was all forecasted to be good yeah. and stay the same. So, But it wasn't. I mean, and that's... That's ocean, isn't it? Well, I've I've learnt that's ocean sailing. Mm. Um, but but and the, then once the conditions were so bad, which you see in the video, um, it would have been it was it was safer for just to con continue with the tow. Um, 
because both boats were managing with the tow, all right, the line was snatching and the line was breaking, but the boats were fine. There was no ex excessive tug on the cleats. I, I con constantly got underneath the deck and we was inspecting the bolts and the, and the underside of the boat. So we've got four cleats at the back. We were distributing the weight between the four cleats. So we were managing it fine and we managed the risk and the risk I believe the risk was well managed mm. um, and then once it once the conditions were so bad it would have been too unsafe to transfer him from his boat to our boat and then it was morning the conditions calmed down again and then the, the Coast Guard come out so that was the that was the reason why we didn't get him on board there's loads of people that have said various different scenarios that could have worked out but we were so close to land it would have been a shame to just leave his, leave his boat and mm. as I say the conditions were fine allowing us to tow which we did so I believe that we made the right call yeah and he did have food and water on his boat so yeah yeah oh lots cigarettes. of cigarettes yeah. <laughs> obviously we were upwind from him every time we opened the uh, saloon doors we could just smell the cigarette smoke coming in um, which is how we kept knowing he was okay. He was okay. <laughs> but one thing he didn't have, he didn't have a handheld VHF. Mm. He didn't have an EPIRB, didn't have flares, didn't have an emergency antenna, didn't mm. have an anchor, didn't have anchor chains. No. Um, didn't, like, didn't have an engine, he only had an outboard. Only had an outboard engine. Yeah. Um, I mean, despite what people have said, what we should and shouldn't have done, that, that, guy, that man should not have gone out to sea. His boat weren't seaworthy enough. Mm. It didn't, he, wasn't, he wasn't equipped for an ocean passage. And had he had had any of them things, mm. probably any one of them, or any two of them items that I just listed, he wouldn't have been at sea for three days. Because mm. when we spotted him, I zoomed out on the IS to see if I could see any ships nearby. And um, like 20 miles north were tanker ships. It's a shipping route, so that was just constant. At night, shot up a flare, mm. EPIRB, anything, I mean, EPIRB, what, £700? Price of life, eh? But anyway, again, it's easy to criticise because we don't know his situation. But um, we knew his situation at the time, which, which was stranded at sea for three days. Yeah, so those are the things that like, we just recommend to always have if you were doing an ocean passage anyway, yeah. as much as most people would know that already anyway. But. Yeah, exactly. I mean, and we were obviously, the, if we was to ever do another ocean passage, or just even anyway, like we've... We said that we're definitely going to get a floating rope, yeah, a floating rope, and just a rigged up, sort like bridle towing system, where we can, if we even need to be towed or towed again, we're just ready. Don't need to worry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, we we've, we've learnt a lot. But also, can you explain what other people have suggested about a better way of towing with an anchor chain? Yeah, I haven't haven't had the chance to, to look into it yet so pay out anchor chain from the boat that's being towed mm -hmm. secure that anchor chain obviously so it's not just holding on via the gypsy and so it's like tie your anchor chain to your boat via a bridle i'd imagine and then you tie onto that anchor chain so that anchor chain one sink so it will never it will, the rope shouldn't snatch and it's no it's not going to break is it mm. so yeah I, i'd like that idea and again i hadn't have heard of that until you guys commented on it and yeah thank you for that i'm de definitely going to use that in the future mm -hmm. and that's the beauty about putting our video or any video up on youtube and getting people's opinion that have been there and done it we value your guys opinion so thank you very much and uh since we did the crossing we've met a few people in grenada and tobago keys and they said that they actually heard about the whole story. I think someone in Grenada set up a fundraiser for him so that he could raise money for fixing his boat, getting a new mast, sails, etc. Um, and we actually met this guy called Robert, who actually has the same boat oh, as he us. Does, yeah. He just bought it. He met the guy at the fundraiser, had a picture with him, and then he showed us the photograph. I'll show you now. It was just great to see him, like, after the whole scenario, like, a bit more... He did have a Chelsea there. top on, the French guy. If I had known that, then maybe my decision to tell him it might have been a little bit different. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> so that was good to know that he was fine. Good to see him all looking well and healthy. But 
since then we've also heard that he's now sold his boat and use that money to fly back to France. So. In a way, in a way he's done a runner. <laughs> he's, he's done Maybe. a runner. That's what he's done. It sounds like he's raised money and then he sold his boat and gone to France. So that's all we know. I don't know. Maybe he didn't raise enough money. Who knows? We don't know the full story. But no, yeah, that's what we've heard through the grapevine. We will find out more information and update everybody. Because I would like to meet him. Yeah. Just to say hello. Yeah, we've put ourselves out there as much as we can and hoping that he will reach yeah. out to us or see the videos. And yeah, because a lot of his... There was a, an advert or a post on Facebook whilst we were out at sea about him. Basically, it was a, a post which was missing boat. Boat's been at sea for too long. It was due in on this day and it was... I think it was a week overdue. And that was his friend that posted the post on mm -hmm. a French Cruisers Facebook group. So we've tried to reach out to them and they haven't responded yet. But we'll keep on trying. I mean, I, would, you know, I want to meet the guy and say hello. Yeah. And finish the story off. But we arrived in, we arrived in Grenada. Mm -hmm. Had the party, which you saw, which is good fun. If anybody wants to do the Atlantic, I would strongly, I would definitely suggest the Arc or the Arc Plus. You have a fantastic time. Meet so many nice people. Mm. Yeah, I mean, we're cruising with boats just over there who we've been with since Los Palmas mm. um, and having a great time. Uh, we also got uh, the Spirit of the Ark Award. Yeah. Because um, they do awards at the end of the crossing, like fastest boats. That wasn't us. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but we weren't last. We weren't the last no, boat. No, that's true. Yeah. That's true. And in his own words to speak, I thought it was his time had come. However, after three days adrift, and fortunately for him, a boat from the Ark Plus was passing nearby. The crew took the time to check on the yacht and see what assistance they could provide and set about towing these four single-handed uh, sailor to port here in Grenada. The actions of the crew arguably saved the life of this captain and he eventually made safe landfall in uh, St. George's Grenada. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the spirit of the Arctic Award is in recognition of the potentially life-saving support these are first to provided over 24 hours. This year's spirit of art plus is awarded to the crew of Coco. crazy to think that like we were really conservative with our sail plan and like, like to be honest it was driving me a little bit crazy because it was taking us such a long time I was like I just need to get there but I'm glad we were conservative because if it wasn't for that we wouldn't have found him mm. um so it all just like, David. lined up David's got a name now we found David. David sorry David David <laughs> Um, he, prob yeah. he probably can't understand this anyway. He definitely didn't speak English, and we don't speak French. No. Yeah, and also, I want to. We've obviously listed a, f a couple of items that we've got on our boat for an ocean passage or just any passage. And if there's anything extra or any like tips or tricks that any of you guys can suggest to us, floating rope, for instance, a small bit of chain for a tow, little, little bits and bobs, I'm always open to suggestions and tips and tricks because that's how you learn mm. learning from others listening to other people so please pound away in that comments box and give us some some tips please yeah and lastly i think i'd like to say that this boat's been great like to us like it handled the situation well yeah can't imagine being in the situation in our old boat i mean we would have definitely had to have taken him on board oh yeah there's because no there's no way we yeah. could have towed 
our last boat. So I think that this boat handled it all really well. Yeah. We were all really comfortable, even though I was sleeping on the floor in the saloon. <laughs> oh, is that hence the pink pajamas? Hence the pink pajamas. <laughs> Jalen got. S oh, mm. and Jalen's name is, although it's spelt of a C, it's pronounced J. Yeah. So it's Jalen. It's C E Y L A N, spelt, pronounced J A Y L A N. There you go. Joan got quite a lot of hate for her pink pyjamas at first. Pink unicorn pyjamas. But my argument to this is if it was if it was made from the same material, like if it was exactly the same, obviously minus the pink and minus the unicorns, mm -hmm. but it was black with a musto badge on it, it would have been deemed appropriate. Yeah. So... Uh, I was literally like having a powwow on the floor, in the saloon, under the table, and like it was just so wet so I just wanted a long sleeve top and trousers <laughs> and um, those are the ones I had so yeah I wasn't I wasn't on the job in my pajamas I just ran out quickly when the situation happened and then you were our beacon of hope <laughs> <laughs> but it was a very cr mind you quick we've been recording for half an hour <laughs> it was just a quick recap of the situation um, trying to answer just a couple of the most asked questions mm -hmm. if there's any more questions that people have again comment them down below and uh, we do have a, a blog a website blog which hasn't got any blogs on it yet but <laughs> but a bit more info about us or... yeah a bit more info about us and they will have more blogs on it and we will probably do a little write up on this and if there's any unanswered questions we'll answer them in that blog so welcome to the channel everybody who's new but please please bear with our first lot of videos they are, we cringe when we watch them. Oh yeah, don't go back too far. Yeah, we do cringe. <laughs> if there is any way we can improve, please do let us know. We love taking constructive criticism. So yeah, welcome. Hopefully we'll see you next week. Yeah. Goodbye. See ya. Mm. Yeah? Yeah, perfect. Lovely. Alright, shall I start dinner? Yeah.